In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can easily set up horizontal scrolling for any of your grids inside the new Generate Blocks 2.0. So you can see on this website here, I have this travel blog section, which is just querying in six of the posts from the blog on this website. So here on a big desktop version, I think this looks pretty nice. It's not too overwhelming. The height of the section is pretty similar to other sections on this page. So it doesn't take up much more space than anything else. But when we get to tablet, now we drop down to two columns and now it's taking up quite a bit more vertical real estate since now we're only able to fit two in each row. This doesn't really bother me too much, although I think it could be improved. What really bothers me is once we get down to mobile and everything just stacks in a single column. Now this blog section is taking up a ton of vertical real estate. You have to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll to get to the end of the blog here. Now all of this was done just using the new query loop in Generate Blocks 2.0, which here inside the looper uses CSS Grid. This is set to the repeat 301FR, which is just the default here for three columns. When we go into tablet, we see that this is set to repeat two. And if we go into mobile, it's just 1FR. So this is set up pretty default to how you would set it up inside of any blog loop. Here on this looper, I've actually gone in here and given it a class. And if we go in here into the advanced, we can see I've called this scroll hyphen grid. You can name that whatever you want, but this is in theory a reusable utility class that I could use on different kinds of grids on my website. Now there are a couple things we can do here inside the UI to help make this horizontal scroller, but we're not able to do all of it inside the UI. And since it's just a few lines of CSS, I actually prefer to write the CSS for all of this. Now I'm only gonna affect the tablet and mobile version. So I'm just gonna go to our tablet preview here and we'll go into the additional CSS. And the first thing we need to do is write a media query so that the CSS we write will only affect the tablet and mobile versions. So to do that, I'm just gonna write the at sign and then type in media. And inside my parentheses, I'll do a max width of 1024 pixels, which is the breakpoint for tablet inside of Generate Press. We'll open and close our brackets there and I'm gonna give us just a little bit more space so it's easier to see. Now what we need to target is our scroll grid. So we'll go ahead and type period, scroll grid, and open and close our curly brackets. Now to get these two columns, which we're seeing here on tablet, we're actually using grid template columns back inside the editor, but we need to override that here. So we're gonna write grid template columns, and I'm gonna change this to none. Now, this is one of the things we could have done in the UI, but I think it's all gonna make more sense as you see it typed out in CSS here. Instead of the grid template columns, what we wanna do is something called grid auto flow. And for the grid auto flow, we're gonna choose columns. So this is kind of similar to Flexbox where you can change the flex direction from row to column. Here, we're just saying make this grid auto flow into columns. Now, as you can see, these columns are pretty skinny. They're way too skinny for what we need here. It's just trying to fit all of the columns inside of our container, which is the default behavior. But instead of that, I want to dictate how wide these columns are gonna be. So to do that, I'm gonna do something called grid auto columns, and that will allow me to size the columns inside of this auto flow grid. Now, there's a couple different ways you can tackle this, especially if you wanna use some calc functions or some min functions that will change the size of these columns. But for simplicity's sake, just to show you how this works, I'm just gonna type in this value of 320 pixels because I think my blog card looks good at about 320 pixels. Now, once we do that, we can see all of these columns are now 320 pixels wide, except we have a problem. It's now overflowing outside of the container of our website, and it doesn't allow us to scroll over and see the rest of that content. To get the horizontal scrolling, what we need to do is change the overflow X, the X axis is left and right, and we're gonna change that to scroll. As soon as we do that, you can see our container over here, the padding on the side is being respected. And now we actually have the ability to scroll left and right. So here with just a few lines of CSS, we've gone from this huge grid of blog columns to just a single row that we can scroll left to right. And since these columns are being cut off here, it's pretty intuitive that the user is gonna need to scroll. And since we did this inside of a media query, it's also affecting our mobile version here. 
But if we go back to desktop, since this is only affecting tablet and mobile, our desktop is unaffected and still using this same grid layout that we set up before. Of course, if we didn't wanna do that, we could just get rid of this media query. And now we'd have the same scroller here on desktop as well. However, I think I do like having the grid here on desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that media query back in. Let's go ahead and publish these changes. I wanna open it up here so I can go inside the inspector and give us a little bit more of an accurate preview of what we'd see when we'd be able to touch the screen. So here with this mouse, I'm able to kind of click and drag. So you can see I'm able to drag this from left to right, but we can see it kind of will stop here in the middle of a blog post and I don't love that, but we can actually fix that with just a couple more lines here. What we're gonna be doing here is setting up scroll snapping using just CSS. Now to do that, I'm gonna type in scroll snap type. We need to affect the X axis. So we're gonna type in an X there since we're worrying about the left and right scroll. And we're gonna change this to mandatory. We also have the option to change this to proximity, which will mean it behaves a little bit differently. In this case, I think mandatory is gonna work better, but you can always play with those different options. Now, when we add this, it actually doesn't change the functionality at all because we need to tell it what we're snapping to. So to do that, we actually need to select each one of these cards inside of our scroll grid. To do that, I'm just gonna use a nested selector. So I'm gonna do scroll grid, and then I'm gonna select any div that's a direct child. So this little greater than symbol means get a direct child, and I'm saying that it's a div because each one of these blog cards inside of this loop is a div right now. So now just to show you, if I do a border of one pixel solid, you can see each one of these blog cards are being selected. So to tell it how we want it to snap, we're gonna do scroll snap align. And here we have the option to do start, middle, or end. I want to do this on the start. Now, unfortunately it doesn't preview great here inside the customizer, but if we go ahead and publish this and refresh on the front end, we can see as we scroll, it's going ahead and just snapping this to the beginning of each one of these cards. I'm just kind of click dragging and letting go. And it's gonna go ahead and snap right to the start of each one of those cards. So that just makes it easier for the user to be able to scroll around and see exactly which card they're trying to find. This works the same here on mobile as well. So if we scroll down to the mobile version and I just kind of flick my mouse here, you can see it's scrolling over and stopping right at the edge of this. It's a nice smooth animation as well, which is definitely a bonus. We were able to do this all with just a few lines of CSS. And like I said, there are a couple things that you could have done inside the editor here. So let's just take a look at that. I know we could take care of the grid template columns. We could also take care of the grid auto flow and the overflow on the X to scroll. So if we go back into the editor here, I'm gonna go into our tablet version since we only wanna affect that. And I do have the looper selected here. So what I could do is just get rid of that grid template columns that I had in there and go into the grid auto flow and just change this to column. So now our grid is automatically just setting up as columns. Using the search function up here, I can just search for overflow and you can see our overflow on the X, we can change that to scroll. Now, again, this doesn't have very good UI here inside the editor. Even if I save it and refresh it and get back here into my blog query, and go into tablet version. You can see it just doesn't look great inside the editor, which is another reason I kind of prefer to just write all of this inside of the additional CSS here or inside your child theme. That way you can better preview what's actually happening and on the front end of the site. Unfortunately, we're not able to set up the grid auto columns or the scroll snap type inside the editor. So either way, you're gonna have to write some CSS. So I would tell you just probably go ahead and write all this CSS here. It's really not a lot and it'll give you a little bit more practice. So hopefully that's easy enough for you to implement on any of your grids going forward. Like I said, this is all inside the new Generate Blocks 2.0. It is possible on the older versions, but that actually uses Flexbox and some margin tricks that makes it just a little bit harder to do. If you learned something in today's video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.